All right, and we are back. The start of our next match, Oakland Infamous taking on Boston Red Legion. We see Boston right there on the snake side. Rolling the guns down that snake side of the field. But Boston's super dominant heavy gun fighters. I mean, they, they train so much, and even the, the American guys they have on their squad are real good gun fighters. So you kind of want to pick and choose your gunfights against them. As we see right there, Arnold Francisco getting shot in a gunfight down the tape. And they went with their Russian line. You see Britnikov, Britnikov coming up that Dorito side of the field, and you see all these infamous players coming off. Yeah, Pantilev. So Pantilev won that gunfight down the tape against Gino Benedict, or I'm sorry, against Arnold Francisco. And then Britnikov just able to come down that Dorito side. You see Britnikov running that flag in. Hangs it, and the first point will go to Boston. Real quick point, man. Um, again, you know, it's once you go gun shift, and I'm not even really need to shift because it's not like the Russians were doing any sort of damage down the snake side. They did shoot Arnold out of that back corner. But, uh, you know, that being said, Britnikov was just allowed to stomp up that Dorito side, murdering people. And, um, and that was definitely the difference. So we're going to have Rocky tag on. We uh, thank you to Catfish, Kevin Arcilla, for helping us for two, for two games. We're going to have Rocky Cagnoni up here. We were just watching uh, me and Rocky have a little trip down memory lane going to the, uh, all the other, lo just the other location, the very first location of World Cup, man, uh, Paintball World, over there uh, by Old Town, which is where we all got our start. So. Now it's a parking lot. I guess Alex, that's progress. But now we're at Disney World, so that's good. Yeah. One more two. 13.09. One more two. Uh, Tons Sasha. of time left two. in the first half. We see LB Fowl getting his boys up. Yeah, they lost that first point. Now this is a, this is switch a little bit here because we've watched in the first two games um, the, 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 the team that had been fought through the wild card division really started stepping up right away. But I'll tell you what. That's funny, though, because Boston, though they, this is their first game of this tournament, you really got to think about this way. Those guys have been practicing nonstop for, like, two weeks in Florida. I mean, you know, and I called Bart Blonsky up, like, hey, Bart, we need, let's get some interviews. And uh, he was like, all right, man, well, we're in Lakeland right now at Central Florida Paintball, and we're practicing. So, you know, I was like, wow, I, how long you guys been practicing for? So they're not, they're not cold. It's not like they're just coming in. And uh, as we see the rain starting to fall, and we see Glenn Takamoto, World traveling paintball player, been hitting up Europe a lot, and there's Danny Tiljack on the left-hand side of your screen, who just picked up from Avalanche. And the start of this next point, see the breakout. Infamous tries to spread out Stephen Lasher. Oh, Stephen Lasher gets oversliding his bunker, gets taken out. Looks like Dave Baines might have had that angle. See Dave Baines right now. Now that's, that's one of the Blonskys. Looks like that is might be Matt Blonsky. Or Bart Blonsky right there on your screen right now. Back left! Back left! Back left! And as the rain really starts to fall, here comes Justin Rabikoff streaking through the center of the field. With Dave Baines coming up to that center axe. And let's see, this looks like this is... Bart Blonsky here getting all the way up on the snake side of the field. Looks like just one infamous or two infamous players. Danny Tiljack crossed up. Oh, able to get a shot. Looks like Bart Blonsky got a shot on him. Yep, able to get a shot on Glenn Takamoto. So hell of a job by Bart Blonsky. So Dave Baines and Bart Blonsky having a good point here. Now, the, the, Russian, the Boston Religion, they have two lines as the rain really starts to fall again. Um, they have two lines. They have an American line and they have a Russian line. The, the American line is stacked up with talent, dude. They have the Matt Blonsky, Bart Blonsky, and, you know, for people that don't know Bart Blonsky's skills, um, he's really kind of, you know, he's definitely a premier player. Um, one of, on his good days, man, you don't want him on the snake side against you because he's just really, really, really aggressive. He pushes the envelope. Um, he's always going to be in your face. Um, his brother has, has really been stepping his game up past couple years and has also got to Bart's level. Before, Matt was a good player, um, but Bart was more consistent. Now, Matt is 
more consistent than Bart, though Bart is more aggressive. So you're going to get good play out of both those guys. They got Dave Baines, Beast Pen, um, who's probably top three, four maybe in the world as a gunfighter. I mean, there's just not a lot of other guys that are as good as him at, at the actual gunfight itself, man. And, be, and he's just a, such a monster gun that he's able to do that. Let's listen into the piss real quick. Yeah, so you see him, Bart Blonsky getting checked over right there. You see Callie Rudolph, Kevin Rudolph right there, um, who's also one of the American guys on the Russian squad. And there's another one, Heyman Chapman, coming from the trauma camp. May trauma in peace. Sad to see them go, man. One of the best franchises out there, but some of their, their legacy lives on and, and guys like Heyman Chapman now playing for the Russians. And again, so you have the American line. And you have the Russian line. Now, the Russian line, we see them out there right now. Britnikov, little baby Russian man. That dude is, he's a young guy. Apparently, he, like, hunts bears or something in Russia in the offseason. Uh, he's vicious, man. He's, he's a killer. He's, uh, he's, he's out there, and he's very aggressive. He's talented. He's skilled. You see the breakout of the Russians right now. We've got Pantilev. Heavy guns for the Russians. Looks like they lost Mishka, though. So Mishka getting shot early. And so Pantilev trying to shoot there. And two Russians trying to get up in that center of the field. Looks like Malloy and... Oh. So the center Russian getting shot. And here comes Pantilev. Oh, dots car Markowski's eye. And Infamous just coming off wholesale over there again at the gun of Britnikov. So Britnikov having a field day so far in the first two points that he's played. So looks like uh, Dima. So Dima in there with Pantilev having an awesome, uh, doing an awesome job down the snake side of the field. The score is now three to nothing in favor of Boston. So wow, Boston's coming out on all cylinders. And it's interesting, man, because Oakland, I felt, had played, probably played the best, man. I, I mean, they just, you know, you, it, the, the pickup of Danny Tiljak and Karl Markowski has really strengthened that lineup because that's two more weapons they have. I mean, you have a Karl Markowski in the lineup, and, and Karl's big problem on Avalanche is they didn't play him where he needed to be played, in my opinion. I felt that Karl's a weapon. I played with Carl for like about three seasons on, on excessive. And Carl is the fastest man in paintball. Really. I mean, he's, he didn't look like it, but um, he's never like, lost a race. And that guy has raced. He, we raced him against every person that we could possibly think of who's faster than him. And he beat everybody. He's got like this weird sixth gear that he's able to just turn. It doesn't even look like he's running. So Carl is the fastest guy in paintball. So pick up a weapon like that. you got to use him as a weapon. And I really felt that they're letting him play the game I think that he should be playing, which, which is cool because Carl is very, very talented. And he's also been playing long enough he's starting to get that mental strength that, uh, that you need to, to really excel out here on this level of play. Um, and and that's, that's been a really big, big boon to his game because it's, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really important to remember how hard it is to constantly excel at this level of the game. You're gonna get shot off the break. You're gonna lose gunfights. You're gonna get bunkered. You're gonna get yelled at. You know, you're gonna get people up in your face, man. And that's just the nature of the game at this level. And Carl's really started to kind of become more accustomed to that, not get his not get so down when he gets shot off the break three times in a row. Five seconds. See the break out here. Infamous Steven Lasher, rookie for Infamous. Up, oh, taken out, Bart Blonsky. So Bart Blonsky getting shot, trying to make it into Snake One. His brother's right behind him. The difference is how you tell the difference between the Blonskys. Bart has a camo sandana. Matt has a black sandana. That's how you tell the difference. Because other than that, and Bart actually, Bart has a little bit more of a swagger <laughs> when he walks. Right, so uh, we're going to get Rocky Cagnoni to come up here in just a second as we're watching Infamous start to get chewed up again down that Dorito side. This time it's the American line, though. Heyman Chapman in the back center. Uh, Bart Blonsky got shot off the break. Matt Blonsky on the snake side. 
And on that Dorito side, there's Dave Baines just snow blowing paint at the front of his gun. You're looking at Matt Blonsky right now. Again, Matt Blonsky, black head wrap. His brother, Bart Sandana head wrap. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, you know, Camo Sandana. And the Russian, smart, smart, conservative point right now. Um, and, uh, and that's what they need to do. They're up three to nothing. We're at the five minute mark. And, uh, and here we see Heyman Chapman coming up the center and Ma Matt Blonsky making the bump to snake one. And it's just Steven Lasher left alive and he's gonna get a couple that's it. cross field from, looks like Justin Rabikoff. All right, we have the, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Rocky Cagnoni here. What's going on, what's us. going on? Uh, so Rocky, um, let, let's talk about this real quick. This is kind of cool. Uh, we just watched Justin Rabikoff have a good point. Yes. Right? Okay. And, um, you know, we just watched the, the people at home saw us, you know, talking about the old school paintball and, you know, the, how the World Cup's progressed a little bit. Um, just to, just to, just us at uh, Paintball World. You know, so Justin Rabikoff out there. What does the name Rabikoff mean to you? Who else, oh, that, what that does that bring, bring to mind? That brings back memory. Scuba Steve, old school. You know, now his son's in it ripping it up. You know, he's playing unbelievable right now. The Russians... Um, they need this tournament. You know, they need to go out and show their dominance. And you know what's pretty kind of funny too is that uh, you know we see the score four to nothing, and <laughs> we're out there. They're walking. The, we're all walking the field yesterday, and then all the guys are walking the field. And so Justin Rabikoff, he is a player on the Russians. His father, old school paintball legend Steve Scuba Rabikoff, Steve from I mean Houston Heat, one of the best amateur teams to actually make that progression and. Help redefine amateur paintball back when before it was D1, and then then he came pro, uh, played with Image, played with Ironman, um, played with Avalanche, and Avalanche ended up becoming a lot of the guys from Avalanche ended up becoming the guys that now play on Infamous. Yes. Okay. So, and, and, you know, first it was Miami Effect. You know, Avalanche guys left after the crazy stuff that happened in it, 2002. 2002. They became Miami Effect. Miami Effect became Infamous. And so, that really is the old avalanche. But the funny cry. thing is, is like is we have 13 seconds left. Is that so? Steve is coaching against his son, and they were pissed. And Justin, oh, that's Alex, right. he was that's like, right. I'm going to make you wear it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's like he's been getting on him his whole life, and you could just see Justin like, yeah, that's not happening. That, and no. he just went out there and proved it that last point. He's going to show Dad what he's made of this weekend. That's for sure. Um, we're getting some questions uh, coming in. Um, what guns do the Russians shoot? I believe the Russians are sponsored by Bob, Bob Long, Long yeah. Technologies. So he's got Bob. They got Bobby's guns. And I was just in the pit. They used to be sponsored by Smart Parts, and then they made the move to Bobby's guns. And uh, yeah, so they've been rocking those out all year. They actually went back to Bobby. They used to be with Bobby before. Yeah, so they went back to their. So they went back longer. home pretty much. And I was just from. It just came from the pits. Their guns are shooting good. Really, real good. Nice. All right, so Oakland calls a timeout. Very important right now, man. First yep. of all, it, they should have called that timeout and preserved some of the game clock. Yeah, they should. That's what they should have done, which done is funny because Rusty's earlier. normally always really good at that um, because they should have done that 3-0 yep. and had an extra amount of time um, to, to try to come back because now they're in the hole four points, and there's still five minutes left, to, left in the first half. And, you know, again, this format is it's a race to nine points. So the first team to nine points wins – or the highest score at the end of regulation. Correct. Right. Correct. So they should have used that timeout a little bit earlier. Yeah. Well, let's see. I mean, they, they got to win one of these points. This is huge for them. They got to come yeah, out. And they got to get the I mean, point. They need to. They need to win a couple in the row right now. We see Car Markowski, Rusty Glaze, uh, Travis Lemansky. There it goes. Looks like Shane Howell out there as well, and John Richardson in that back center. So Shane. Shane Howe getting shot off the break. Oh, but Russians losing. Looks like uh, Pamphilev off the break. Mishka's still in there. Swings out to the Dorito. He's in there. Oh, safe. big move, Carl big Markowski. Move. Huge. All the way. Go, Carl baby. Markowski, he's immediately you know, going to have to. Oh, see, Carl oh, immediately no. gunned up, though, into that lane. But he didn't see that Russian make that move. So Carl nope. thought as soon as he slid in. It was open. As he, Yeah, he thought it was open, but it wasn't because the Russian definitely made that, that nice move in there. And immediately he knew, too. 
You know, but that comes from that comes from you know these guys have been practicing nonstop, man, for like two weeks. So. Exactly, they've been on this field. They know every inch. Yeah. I mean, talk about methodical. The Russians, when it comes down to getting down and dirty, they got all their spots. And Rusty Glaze getting cleaned out over here on the snake side by by Mishka. <laughs> Looks like the whole team. Put a wow, infamous on just really coming out flat right now. Yeah, they gotta they gotta pick which, it up. Which is interesting to see from both angles. One, it's cool to see the Russians come out and play like they can play because they, they have it. really underperformed this yes, year. Now yes. that being said, they're still ranked third. Exa yeah. So but it's not like they sucked this year. No, absolutely not. But they have not. I haven't seen them play to their potential this year. No, they really haven't. You know, and and the thing is, is you know, you've been around and you've been watching a lot of the games. Yep. Because you've been helping out the Ironmen. Yep. Um, at the Rocky the master gun tech for die so he's here courtesy of die precision um and thank you for coming to help out no worries but uh but yeah sorry so, i was okay. late <laughs> so i mean but you've been watching those guys play and you're like look look at it phoenix you know and this is actually an interesting thing too this exact matchup that we're watching right this second this happened in phoenix, phoenix. and a similar thing happened you had russians go up a ton of points and in the finals this happened so yes. to win phoenix infamous had to come back with seven guys uh, uh, basically, you had, uh, you know, you had LB, Travis, and uh, and I think it was uh, Glenn. Those guys played like something like 30 points. Yeah, in a so row. it was something ridiculous. Like, and they literally, because John Richardson was on his deathbed. Yes. Posey, uh, Posey, Posey had, had to fly had a death back. The family, yeah. So he had to fly out, which was their coach. And then um, Eric Crum, who was one of their front guys at the time, who was one of the guys they used a lot to get reps, um, to get up to do weapon type stuff. He was out with an injury, too. Yep. So yep. seven dudes running hardcore squad. They came back in the finals of the tournament to win the money and the respect against this Russian squad. So the Russians, right now, they're going to, one, probably talk about that in the pits, about how they don't want that to happen again. Two, they want to make a statement right now. Exactly. You know, they want to make a statement. We haven't won an event, and you guys did. You beat our ass in the first event. With a light lineup, because yeah, like with a you light said, lineup, and they were one point away from winning. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, they, this, you know, they, they were up. They was like, I think the score was six to like two or something, yeah. and then Infamous just turned it on. All right, I mean, Callie Rudolph, the, Kevin Rudolph, getting uh, getting some spins here for the Russians, and we see Stephen Lasher right there for Infamous into Snake One. He's trying to get a shot on the back center and uh, Callie Rudolph. Now, now the Russians are playing smart. I mean, they they know they got the points. They got a yeah. unique breakout. Well, they got Heyman Chapman in the back center. He gets taken out. Um, Stephen Lahu, Stephen Lashen dodges the paintball right there, and then here comes Rusty Glaze diving on that Dorito side of the field. So yeah, this is what we were talking about. Here's this is the point. You can see it in their yep. body language. Yep. Look at their body language. Now when you want to see how a t how a team or how players are playing. You got to look at their body language. And here, uh, Bart Blar, uh, Matt Blonsky gets eaten up trying to get out to the back stand up on the snake side of the field. So it's just uh, Callie Rudolph and one more Russian in the center of the field here as Steven Lasher's making his move down the snake side of the field. That's and you it. see up the center of the field. This is what Infamous needs to do. They need to go on the attack. When they go on the attack. Yeah. No, they do. That, and that's, that's, that's exactly what we talked about. You just said that. They need to win this point bad. Yep. But you can see it. It was, ten it was tenacity. That's what they did. They were... They realized they were down. They realized if they went down another point, they're going to be losing 6-0, to zero, three points away from a loss with two minutes left to go in that first half. They got to go. That's ridiculous. You know, they didn't fight through the wild card division to get here and get blown out in the first game by the Russians who they beat in Phoenix. It's totally different. You know, that's exactly. what they're thinking. It's totally different. So, shoot so much softer on the ball. So, yeah, and that, that's super important as a mentality. You see LB, so, you know, hanging that flag for and for, for Infamous. So, good job by them What's to step up? back up and get back in this game. But they're still losing by four, man. They got to keep it up. They got to keep it up. 8-6. We're watching the Philly Americans intermixing with Infamous. We see Glenn Sakamoto filling it up. Filling up his uh, tank. So, yeah, Philly Americans getting ready next. They will be taking on X Factor in the fourth game of the day. Again, this is a best two out of three series. So, we're in round two. And the team matchups are uh, Dynasty Impact. Impact beat Dynasty. Then we have the Ironman taking on Tampa Bay, and uh, Tampa Bay losing to the Ironman. 6-4. Six, 6-4 four. Six four in an awesome matchup. Yeah, they, uh, the, what, I, what hurt damage was that five minute, that major right at the end. Yeah. You know, and Oliver was feasting, man. I mean, he's, you know, it's, you know, it's, 
think he had like seven kills in the first half alone, yeah. which, which is what Angel did on, for Dynasty. Uh, but he was really getting penetration up that center. You know? and, um, and I don't think anyone else had walked the field to, to do that because Oliver was the only one out there on, a, on any team I've seen so far played who was able to make that move, you know, and, and consistently he did it twice. So uh, looks like penalty on Infamous. Wow, so they took that point away. It looks like dirty hang. Looks like there was a dirty hang, um, and they took that point away from Infamous. And you can see Danny Tiljack right now trying to get his attention to Pitts. Gino Benedicto right in front of him right there. Yep, trying to get his last Better guy out. out. So he's got to get Danny trying to get the, his player into the box. So as that penalty starts to click off from Infamous, that's got to be a kill, Rock. You know, yeah, they come out and you play an awesome point. Yeah, and then to have it taken away like that, that's got to hurt you a little bit. But they just got to keep going, man. They got to keep on the attack. They got to tighten it up. All right, so all the way up in the center of the field, the Russians now streaking also. Look to that center. It looks like Mishka. Oh, Pantsilev getting shot out by, I think that was Danny Tiljak in the back center. But just two infamous players left alive. And the Russians are swarming on him now, coming past the 50-yard line. Oh, getting chewed up, though. But in a bloody war of attrition. Oh, and then Danny Tiljak finally taken out by Mishka. Only 45 seconds. Well, that minor penalty is going to come off the board now. So yep. he'll be back at full strength. 45 seconds left in that penalty. That really hurt getting so that So, Rocky, ball. talk to me about the Ironman game. You know what I'm saying? Just real quick. Dude, everybody on that squad has just put in their time, and they're playing just like a family. I mean, everybody knows what everybody's doing. Everybody's doing their job. And, uh, you know, we didn't get any penalties, I don't think, at that point. So. Which is so key for you guys. Yes. Yeah, because that's what really hurt them, I think, most of the year was them getting penalties. But everybody's going above and beyond, you know, their duties to, to make it happen. A lot of the guys stepped up, you know. Shallow played awesome that first match. But like well, you said, you. it's the best It's the best out of two. I'll tell you who needs to step up right now is Oakland because yes. they're getting whooped by Boston, 6 nothing right now. You know, I want to see him make it a match. Yeah, you, That's see not right, you see him right now talking over that. It's Carl Markowski, John Richardson, and, and Travis Lemansky. They got to put it together. And also, you know, though Infamous had a really awesome or did an awesome job in the wildcard division, this is a new field layout, brand new field layout for this, for this round. So both, you know, both teams are getting a fresh look at this. So, you know, Infamous... Though they just played through the first round and played great, they didn't play this field this way. It's, this is completely different. I mean, the snake is different, Doritos are slightly different, and all the shots are way different. Yep. So with a minute and 50 seconds left in the first half, again, race to nine, man. So Russians three points away from a victory, still with a minute and 30 seconds left in the first half. See Travis Samansky right here getting ready to go. John Richardson right beside him on the breakout. It's all gunned up. Matt, or Bart Blonsky right there on your screen. Looks at his toe. Did he get shot? Nope. Looks like he's clean. Oh, referee getting in there and pulling him out. Might be a penalty. Nope. He's clean. But immediately his brother backing him up. Slides right in there. Now we have Arnold Francisco. And that's Bart, uh, Matt Blonsky. Took his uh, brother's spot. You see him walking off the top of your screen. And the Russians just dropped two. So it is a, a five on three. And here comes Matt Blonsky uh, advancing, or I'm sorry, making a move out to the back corner. But here comes up the Dorito side of the field. Carl Markowski up the Dorito side of the field. And here comes Johnny Richardson gliding over there as well. And here comes uh, Travis Samansky moving up to the center. So Infamous looking real good at this point. And Matt Blonsky shot cross field. So Infamous finally going to get on the board here. So Rusty Glaze is going to run past Arnold Francisco and grab that flag and, and jog it in as quick as possible to hopefully keep enough time on the board in this first half to score another point here. So the score is now 6-1 to one with 51 seconds left to go in the first half. They got to put a couple more boards, uh, uh, a couple more points on there. They can right. get another got a, got point a question. out of that 51 what, seconds. What do you think about this? One of the questions coming from PB Nation. Um, the question is, why do we think that the so many powerhouse teams 
have been playing so inconsistent this year. I think that, personally, man, honestly, it's tough because, you know, what is a powerhouse team? Obviously, Russians, Dynasty, Ironman, um, you know, those are powerhouse teams. But, dude, this is a really, really tough field. Super tough. I mean, look at who, look, 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 look at who won events, okay? Phoenix, infamous, with seven guys, like we just talked about before. That was that was one of the best wins I've ever seen, yeah. ever. It was straight in, up in any smash tournament. Mouth. It was it was very inspiring to watch, and it's you know especially because those guys hadn't won a, a tournament in a while, so it's not like they were on a roll. Exactly, you know, they had to pull that out from the ether, man. And then you know, and then Dynasty's won two events, and that's to prove a point too, because Dynasty was trying to prove that they are still a powerhouse team. Yes, you know, um, they underperformed last year. And they still did great. I mean, it's not like they, I wouldn't say they underperformed, but, you know, those guys have high expectations yeah, for themselves. Yeah, their potential is way up there all the time, and, so, and that's the way they look at it. Yeah, and, they, and they've won two NXL events, and those are the only two NXL events they've ever won. So if you think about it, they really have reemerged in this league as the dominant team. So, so they won two this year. Damage won Chicago. Exactly. Infamous won Phoenix. And you know what's funny too on this we have twenty seconds left, but on that question is like you gotta think about this too. It's like, okay, you, know, you have these huge giant teams with tons of money and awesome players, but the thing is is that Hart wins tournaments. It the is training only gets you to ninety five percent. That last five percent is all mental, it's all gumption and heart, and that is what makes champions. Absolutely. And here we go. And we see Steven Lasher and Glenn Takamoto getting shot out of that insert. Aztec behind the stakes. Steven Lasher stepping up, man. And uh, he's not played. Obviously, his team's getting smashed right now. But he just hasn't played bad as we see Danny Tiljak getting shot. And here, comes, yeah. here comes the Russians. He's going to run down and put it on Steven Lasher. Steven Lasher trying to hide. Steven Lasher's going to wear it right now. The oh, Russian, Russian runs past Steven Lasher, but... Steven finally gets up out of there. So, wow, here comes this Britney right there for the Russians. The Russians are just making moves at will right Dude, they're now. they're playing so as a team. I mean, that's really what it is. You know, they're, they're doing – it's like – it's A, B, C. You know what I'm saying? So you have to – first thing, off the break. Let's get some off the break. They're consistently having infamous have a hard time getting to their spots. Next, next one of the things, B, live in your bunker. Yep. Don't die stupid, you know. Don't get shot trying to wrap around getting some weird ass shot. No, do your job, man. You know your job. You walk the field. Do your job. Don't get don't get shot out of your bunker. They're just step, straight. Step C. Win your gunfights. Exactly. You know. You win gotta your win the gunfights. Don't hide. Don't over gunfight. Die sloppy. Win nice. your gunfights. They're doing line, the A, Bs, and Cs of paintball right now. They're very controlled and very methodical. That's the way they play. So Boston Red Legion, the score seven to one, beatdown of Infamous right now. I'll tell you what. As we head into to, into the uh, into the half. Um, still tons of game left. They could definitely come back. Absolutely. I mean, anything could happen on the second half. All right. So we got Nick Sloviak, one of the star players from uh, Chicago Aftershock, who unfortunately got knocked out of this event. But because Nick is, uh, you know, he's got good paintball eyes, we have him up there managing our kill count. So uh, break it down for me, man. How'd that first half go? First half went really good for the Russians. Um, as we just went over the kills, the Russians consistently, a uh, number of their players are getting two, three, four kills. Uh, Barblonsky's got two. Baines has got three. Rabikov, two. I can't say most of the Russians' last names. Yeah, but we got Pridney and Pantsilev, you know, three and four. And basically, you know, what that says is we're watching Kali Rudolph right here getting some spins because, um, these, they're, I mean, he's amazing, but... They didn't start him, so now they're starting to get it's like, hey, okay, kid, you'll handle, see what you can do. And honestly, I, I think Tally, Callie's one of the most talented young guys coming up, so um, it's good that they're letting him get some playing time so he can prove himself. But what these kill counts say is that, you know, with that many guys getting all pretty much right around the same amount of kills um, in that half, you know, that, that, what that means is that, uh, is that everyone's playing well, man. You guys are playing as a team. Oh, and most definitely. Yeah, you know, that, exactly, and that's the thing. And it basically, you know, it, it, just so people can understand, you know, we're, we're, trying to get, we're trying to add the statistical element into the sport, and we got some trained paintball eyes watching these games and getting the confirmed kills. Paintball is confusing. It's pretty chaotic, and, you know, you're, some, some stuff's going to get lost in the wash, but it's not kills. It's confirmed kills. And, you know, when somebody owns somebody, runs them down, gets a kill, wins a gunfight, that's pretty obvious. Everybody can see it, and we need to start keeping track of that. And you see right now... Infamous, just very frustrated, and I mean, it, you know, see Rusty Glaze doing the whole fist pump down to the ground because yeah, yeah, and you can, and for me being on the Dorito side, I can definitely hear him getting aggravated in their pits. They're yelling at each other, and 
with the way the score is right now, they got to pull it together and just focus. Um, the only the only times they've been getting wins, Gino, uh, Karl Markowski getting down that Dorito side and mopping up kills. They got three kills each. They got to focus on that. Um, the only thing they're not doing, unlike the Russians, is they're not really playing together. The Russians are taking it calm, controlled, keeping those lanes filled and killing them, and then working down the field. I don't see that from Memphis so, right now. Right now, you know, basically it's 7-1, um, but it's going to be 8-1 in a second. You're one point away from a loss. I mean, how would you, if this was you right now and, and Shock was over there instead of Infamous, what are you saying to your guys as a leader on the team? You know, I mean, obviously you're like, oh, we suck, we just got mowed down. No, it's like. No, 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 no. Yeah. You cannot, can't give up. No doubt. You know what I mean? This game's not over. There's 12 minutes and 55 seconds left in the half. Yeah, the score is 8-1. That's a little depressing, but if you give up now, don't don't bother playing paintball. Don't, yeah. you cannot give up. Exactly. Um. Well, cool. You know, right, th well, thanks a lot, buddy, and uh, we'll, we're going to check in with you in a little bit later. No problem, pal. Thanks, bro. Check you later. All right, so there you're looking at the score, eight to one, man, in favor of the Russians. Who it's actually really cool to see them, you know, kind of reemerge here in this event as uh, as that powerhouse team that they are known to be. 11 minutes and 55 seconds left, you know, all they need to do is go, it's, but it, it, this is when you want to, it, it, for, for the next game, because again, it's the best two out of three. So Rocky, what are you thinking? It's like, if I'm Infamous, um, or if I'm Boston, if you go and you put them away right now, that really makes a statement for the next game. They're one point away from a victory. If they put them away right now with a quick point, wow, I mean, that's just like, wow, we just... We got mowed that's, down, man. I mean, you, you know, like, what are you thinking? You know, because if they if, if they let them come back, I mean, even if they don't win, it still puts that fire back in Infamous. Yeah, I, I don't see them letting Infamous come back. I think they're just going to take this point and just run with it. They want to finish it off. They want to make a statement. You know, I'm sure Infamous wants to make a statement back, but they just don't look like they're gelling out there. So 23 seconds, and it looks like looks like uh, it might be a penalty on Infamous too, which would not be good. That's pretty much would be the nail in the I mean, <laughs> Yeah, you know, you're trying to come back, and God, it's just nothing's going Infamous's way right now. Looking at Danny Tiljack, fresh pickup from Avalanche, now on the Infamous squad. And on the breakout, let's see what happens here. Big important breakout for Infamous and. Steven Lasher and it's like Glenn Takamoto trying to get out on the snake side of the field and Glenn Takamoto shot off the break. Oh, Russians losing two as well though, so Danny Tiljack alive in the center. Going to work he is. Yeah, Russian, this is the Russian line of Boston Red Legion. Again, they got two lines, an American line and a Russian line. That's a third drop from the Russian on Dorito's side. So Panty 11 there in the snake one. And he's going to make a move down the snake. Looks like he got popped. Come try to get across that lane. So Infamous trying to fight through that minor penalty. 35 seconds left on that penalty. If they just hold out. Watching get Danny, Danny Tiljack right now mowing his gun. And it looks like the Russians are going to concede the point. So they're still in it. Infamous is still in it. They just got to come back and make a couple points. Well, keep that was, their head up. Yeah, that was pretty smart, though, of them to concede that point. Because you got to think about this. It's like, well, why would you want to do that? You let the time go down. You wait. Now, you're one point away from a victory. Yes. If you blow the horn now, you're going to give the point to Infamous, which, again, is letting them have a little bit of that momentum back. But that's fine because now with 28 seconds left on that penalty still, so there's 28 seconds left on the penalty. Now they have to start down with four. The breakout's the most important part of the game. Exactly. Yeah, and that, that's really going to make the difference. So that's really smart of them. But that's why the Russians have 4,000 coaches and little running people running stuff back and forth. And Unbelievable trainers have. And the Russians have a, a double-up breakout where they just put two in that back home on the breakout, which that's where they're getting their kills. That's why they're shooting a lot of the infamous players going to the outsides. All right, let's listen into the pit right now in Infamous. Yeah. 
they just don't seem to be up. They need to pick it up. Yeah, what, what, what's your what's your reflection upon just watching them in that pit? They look flat. They need to pick it up. They need to, you know, get, get pumped up, get down and dirty. Somebody needs to start slapping somebody. <laughs> Yeah, so, something needs hey, to go also, down. I mean, like, I know everyone's like, oh, you know, I try to stay focused when I'm getting ready, and I just try to stay in the game. I, that was not me. I, no. I got focused by getting up, by getting intense, exactly. and getting ready to go get in a fight. You know, that's, paintball is, don't kid yourselves. This is in, it, this is a fight out there. Fighting with guns, it hurts, um, and you're playing against the best in the world. It's exactly. a fight. You need to get mentally ready for that. Now, that being said, everyone's got their own zone they need to get into, but, man, back in the day on the Ironman, if, if I wasn't up, man, i just get a vicious backhand by Shane, you know, and be like, oh, and I'd give him one, too, if he was flat, Smack but that's back how it was reality. back in the day, you know, so, um, Infamous looks like a couple dudes over there needed to, like, get a couple stiff ones. The Russians are just gonna go diddle-diddle straight up the middle. So, six-point spread right now, Infamous gonna get another body back in 15 seconds. Russians drop Francisco one. Francisco into snake one. He's going to try to chop down field. Dave oh. Baines walking off in the back center. Heyman Chapman still alive for the Russians, but Arnold Francisco, oh, gets destroyed. Looks like Bart Blonsky was able to uh, to put a couple on his side. He also got shot in the face, too. So Bart now backed up by his brother, and we're seeing that's, that was Justin Rabikoff. You're just looking at now. You're looking at Bart Blonsky shooting at that Dorito side of the field. And Bart making a move. All the way, 50-yard line of the snake, Bart Blonsky. He's crawling and shooting that lane at the same time. That's actually real smart. Again, Russians, they, one point away from victory. It's a race to, race to nine. It's a three so Bart, and no, two. Bart's a real calm player. He understands what, what it is right now, what he's got to do. Six minutes and 25 seconds left. So just play smart. Oh. Oh, Bart able to get a shot cross field on Carl, but Carl able to get a shot on him. Yeah, Couple bonus balls from, uh, looks like Rusty on Bart Blonsky, and then his brother immediately filling that spot. Justin Rabikoff also crossed the 50-yard line now, and they're starting to hunt down. Here comes Justin Rabikoff. He's going to run down Rusty Glaze. So, wow, that's actually pretty wow. fitting, considering that if it wasn't, like, Rusty Glaze, as you see him, just super angry at his boys right now. Like, in this, this they got destroyed this game. It's and it's kind of interesting in that, like I said, Justin was talking to his dad, Steve, and they were talking about how, you know, Steve is helping coach Infamous because that's who he used to play for. And uh, now Justin's on Russians, and he runs down Rusty Glaze to, 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 to win the game. Yep, and now that's to make a statement because Rusty Glaze was his sensei, man, pretty much. You know, Rusty Glaze really helped teach Justin Rabikoff how to play paintball. And now, you know, he's, you know, running down – the man that helped him be the player that he is in order to win and win in dramatic fashion. Our final score is going to be Boston 9, Oakland 2. So, again, it's a best of three, so they definitely could fight back. And Oakland played great in the wild card division. But, man, complete destruction of Oakland by Boston. It was total mass murder out there. Infamous is just going to have to go back and regroup and uh, huddle up and just talk about what they got to do to... To yeah. bring it the next game. Okay, let's say you're coaching Infamous, and I mean, what what are you gonna try? What would you focus on? What would you be saying to them? Man, we just gotta play off each other and attack. I mean, we see when they attack, they make it happen. They just they didn't seem like they were working off each other, and uh, that's not their style. Usually, they gel good and and they make moves just effortlessly, but they just didn't look like it was going their way out there right now. They needed to turn it around, go back. Regroup, huddle up, figure out, you know, what they need to do. Yeah, so uh, with, you know, still tons of time left on the uh, on the clock, Russians dismantle Infamous. See the smiles, see the frustration on Karl Markowski's face right there. You can see Dave Bain smiling, and Johnny Richardson right there just kind of puzzled, not really sure exactly what happened. You see the huddle, success. Heyman Chapman glaring over back at Infamous. It's nice times job. like this. Bart Blonsky. So who do you think played well for uh, the Russians that game? <laughs> Jeez, I, I think everybody played yeah, well. Yeah, right. I mean, they all did their job. There were no spark plugs misfiring no, on not at in all. that game. Not, not at, all. at all. Now, this is what's going to make uh, – this is what makes pro teams pro teams. They're going to go back. They're not going to lose their heads, and they're just, they just need to regroup. 
But a 9-2 killing is uh, not how you want to really start off. So, got about 10 minutes left to go before the start of this next game. The next game is X Factor and Philadelphia Americans. Now, X Factor is one of those teams that can either come out and just completely smash you to pieces or potentially, you know, like they got rolled up, I think, by the Russians. I think they got shut out at the last event. Now, they didn't want to play, and it was for third, but no one wants to play for third and fourth. No. But, but, uh, but yeah. But it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's really tough, you know, because when you're playing X Factor, you really don't know exactly who's, you know, what X Factor's coming out. Yeah, you don't know what game they're going to bring to you. Yeah, I mean, are they just, because they, they're wild, they, they wild out. They actually have, they have their own style of play. It's very unique. Um, they, they don't play conservative, you know. No. I'll tell you what, though. It, it, they made their names by super aggressive gunfighting. Absolutely. They are, what, they are wild gunfighters. It's really tough because what they do is the other game is, you see Bart, little shot of Bart Blonsky right there. Awesome job. Um, and Dixon Yang, so, you know, the, the players are out there joking around. It's Archie Moneyma Money Moneymaker. His last name is Montemayor, but we call him the Moneymaker because that's what he does for X Factor. He makes that money <laughs> on the field, man. Archie, amazing player. We're seeing him. Walk around, looking at some, uh, checking out some last-minute angles. Now that's the thing. So like Archie's a perfect example. He's a monster gunfighter, but he's really progressed at, in the past couple years to to make it to, to get to the point where his game is complete. You know, I mean, he can be playback on his heels and handle, and he also can ram it down your throat. Yeah, he's, he's super well-rounded. He can pretty much play any position out there. <laughs> 